Hello and welcome to Best Practices. In this section, we'll learn about some tools and techniques that can help improve the quality and consistency of our React Redux application. We'll begin the section by learning how to preload any data that a page needs when rendered with SSR. We'll then learn how to unit test the more complicated pieces of our Redux code, and in the end, we'll demonstrate a couple ways to add type checking to our client app. In this first video, we'll learn how to preload data for our server side rendering setup. In our last section, we created data tables for our customer and invoice records and applied some reusable pagination logic to them. Today, we'll leverage React Router in our server side rendered application so that we can preload the correct data for any route. We'll start by seeing how to preload our customer data into the Redux store when a user goes to the customer's page so that it doesn't have to be fetched when the client renders. After that, we'll use request parameters of an incoming URL in order to allow users to request a specific page of data. We'll then refactor a bit to make this process easily reusable and apply it to our invoices table. So far, we've been retrieving all of our data via AJAX after the client renders. When we use server-side rendering, we have the opportunity to make the data available to us beforehand, which can help with performance. We're going to start by doing this for the customers list, and to avoid repetition, we'll do some refactoring. We'll take this code for returning a page of customer data and move it into a service so that it can be accessed from other points. So here I'll import my customer model and I'll export a function called list that will take pagination info and a user. Then we'll paste in the code from the controller and modify it to return the page data instead of writing it to a response. Now we can go back to the controller and have it consume the service. We'll import all the service methods and we'll update the body of our endpoint to call the service and write the payload to the response. Now we can go to our server rendering logic and use our service to preload the data. I'll need a couple of imports for support here. And now we'll define a function called preloaded routes, which will take the Redux store and the current request as arguments. This is going to return an array of routes that require data preloading. For now, I just need two of these, one for each of my paginated list routes. Each of these will have a function that we can call to preload the data. For now, I'll just stub out the one for invoices, and we'll come back to it later. For right now, we're going to be focusing on the customers. I need the results updated action so that I can update the store after loading the page. Then I call my list method from my customers service. For now, we just fetch the first page and use a page size of 2 to match what our reducer is doing. When the page is retrieved, we'll dispatch the results updated action with the results. Now let's write a function that matches up the current request with a preloaded route. This will use React Router's match path function to search our preloaded routes array for a route that matches the request. If no route was found, or if the user is not logged in, we won't load any data at all. Otherwise, we return the load function of the matching route. Now, in my render function, I can pass the request and the Redux store to my loader function to get the function that I need. Then I can call the loader function and render the client as soon as it resolves.
We're almost there, but first we need to make a very small update to the smart component. We want to make sure that we don't call our fetch function if data has been preloaded. When we preload, we dispatch the results updated function, and that sets the stale flag to false. So we can check here if it's stale and only call our fetch function if that flag evaluates to true. This should be all that we need to preload customer data, so let's check in the browser. Let's open up the Network tab and see what happens when I load up this page fresh. Notice I see the customers list here, but there's been no request to the API. Not until I start clicking the previous and next buttons do I start seeing API requests. This accomplishes our first goal of preloading the customer data. But what if I wanted a URL that could take me directly to the second page of data? Our setup doesn't support this, but we can fix that with a little work. At a high level, what we need to do is look for the page and page size to be set on the query string. If they're present, we set those values in the Redux store and use them as arguments to our service method. In order to set these properties in the Redux store, we need a new action type, which I'll call setPage. Now let's write the action creator that uses this constant. This will take a page and an optional page size argument. Then it will return our set page action with the page and the page size attached. Now we need to update our reducer code. We'll add a set page handler that updates the page and page size and marks the list stale. Then this gets matched up to the set page action type. Just a couple of small updates before we're ready. First, let's make sure that the set page action is available for import. And now we'll dispatch this action before we preload the customer data. We'll get the action from the destructuring statement, and then we'll look for the page and page size info in the request query, defaulting to the first page and the reducer's current page size when the params aren't present. We can then dispatch the set page action with our page information, and then pass it along to the service method. Now let's test out our deep list linking. Here I've specified a page parameter of 2, and the list shows me the second page of data. Let's try changing the page size too. It looks like specifying page params in the URL is working just as we expected. So let's see how fast we can get this to work for the invoices list. First let's move the controller logic into a service. Once again, this will go into a list function that takes a page, a page size, and a user. Then we modify the query a bit to match up variable names and return the page data. And of course, we'll have to change the controller to call the new service method. This is now just an import of the service and a call to the list function. Now let's head back to the server rendering logic. We'll be following the same pattern, so let's avoid repetition by making a function that we can reuse. I'll bring in my new service, and I'll stop importing the customer actions directly, and instead import the pagination action factory. Now I'll define a load page function that accepts a list ID and a service.
We'll paste in the code that we were executing to load the customers and make some modifications. Now the actions will come from calling the factory function with the list ID, and the page size will similarly come from the reducer specified by the list ID. Then instead of calling my customer service, I'll call the service that gets passed into the function. Now my load function for customers can call load page with a list ID of customers and pass in the customer service. And for the invoices, I can do the same thing by calling load page with a list ID of invoices and passing in the invoices service. That should be it, so let's see if this works for invoices. And just as we hoped, it looks like it loads up the second page of my invoices list, and the network tab shows that I did not have to retrieve the data from the API. Note that this deep list linking only works for our server-side rendering setup. It wouldn't be hard to implement this on the standalone client too. Since we're using React Router, we could further decorate our smart component using the with router function, which would inject the query string parameters into our component. Unfortunately, we're out of time, so I challenge you to pick up where we left off and try to implement this yourself. Today we learned how to preload data when using server-side rendering, as well as how to allow links that will render a specific page in a paginated list.